Roughly designed to compete with the RSI Aurora and Consolidated Outlands Mustang, the Reliant is a very different animal. From the broad sleek wings to the multiple flight modes and the second fully articulated crew seat, the Reliant is with a great deal of potential. So what does all that mean? Uh, Youngblood with you, and today we're going to be doing our Should You Buy video on the brand new Misc Reliant, which is now in concept sale through June 1st for $50. Now, the Reliant description, which we'll have a link to in the description of this video, which is below this, um, well, actually, uh, it goes on to say that it has more GN technology than any other human ship to date. Now, that technology starts to really show itself in the moving cockpit that locks into place depending on what flight mode you're in, whether that be vertical or horizontal, uh, as well as having the omnidirectional thrusters. Um, which may end up being kind of similar to the car to all, but I don't think it's going to have that same like ball bearing effect. Now, on top of all of those things, the Reliant also has um, an advanced composite armor and fancy controls that have really been kind of updated from the same development team that have worked on the Freelancer. So that's all well and good, especially for the cool or kind of wow factors of the ship. But what the heck is its purpose and what is it actually going to do? Well, the description states that it carries more cargo than the Aurora ES or the Mustang Alpha, so it's a natural at short-range hauling. Now, it has the ability to haul 30 SCU of freight, which is about three times as much as the Alpha and over twice as much as the ES. Uh, the ship itself is slightly heavier than both, and it's much wider or taller, kind of depending on the flight orientation, so that ends up making sense that it can carry more cargo, especially since you've got the second hands in there since this is a two-person craft. Um, so when we first look at this information, it appears very cargo focused, um, you know, but then all of a sudden they put this line in there where it's, quote, more than capable of holding its own in, combo, in combat. Well, since I'm curious of just how well this mini hauler, CIG's direct quote, can do in combat, um, let's talk about some other factors. Now, keep in mind, with all things that are related to the ship stats page, um, anything can change. But right now, its armament is including two size one uh, M3A lasers, a missile pylon, and a tractor beam. That being said, that tractor is actually sitting on a size three gimbal mount, which actually makes for some interesting combat loadouts. Now, if you combine that with the fact that it's got 12 maneuvering thrusters and a size three shield, um, I think they're kind of right. <laughs> you know, I think it could be a decent combat ship. On top of that, you get the benefit from having a second set of eyes um, since this is a multi-person ship, and I like it for cargo. So, I, I don't think it's going to necessarily hold up against a dedicated fighter real well, but for a starter ship that ends up being kind of a multi-purpose ship in general, I don't think it's too shabby. I think this thing could actually be a pretty good combat ship. Now, that's all speculation. I mean, hell, this thing's in concept right now. We don't even know, you know, speed, if these are the final stats, but just based on what we see so far, yeah, I think it could do a good job. Now, this ship ends up being sold, like many of the other ships that we've been seeing released lately, as having kind of a modular nature. They talk about how that cargo space actually means a lot of room for medical systems or weapon racks, those types of things. And one thing that I find interesting about these new ships and that modularity they keep talking about is that um, while you never make something like a cargo vessel and make it the best combat ship, it's much easier to buy a ship um, based on just other factors that you like than stats, um, and end up making it closer to what you want it to be. Again, you may not make it the best at that category, but you can kind of get some new hybrid setups. But since we're kind of in speculating mode right now, I think that having a tractor beam opens up some play styles. Um, you know, we talked about in the last video, you know, maybe having this as some sort of small salvage ship could be a real possibility. Um, also, what if you could kind of equip mining lasers in the spot where the M3As are, then use the tractor beam to pull it in? Um, then you have yourself a decent little mining vessel. Now, that seems like a little bit more complicated mechanic than just something as simple as salvage, but who knows, it's a possibility, and I think that the ship has enough going on for it where it kind of opens up some interesting play styles. So, let's go ahead and get into the should you buy portion of the video, and the good news is, at $50, it's one of the more affordable concept sales that we've seen to date, and you're going to get LTI, plus some hangar flare, and the self land hangar. Now, I think the simplest, yes, go buy this ship now uh, type of response is going to go to those who want to fly a multi-person multi ship immediately in the Persistent Universe and maybe want to you know, have a sibling or a child or a parent or a spouse, somebody that just can come and tag along. Maybe you want your wifey or your hubby to be your co-pilot. This is a good cheap way to make that happen, though keep in mind they're still going to end up needing a game package as well. So outside of that, I'm well aware that most of us have more than a few ships laying around. So is it really worth picking this ship up to add to your fleet? And I think for some, the answer there is going to be yes. You know, if you only have combat ships to this point and you want a cheap way to have kind of a jack-of-all-trade ship, then yes. Um, you know, 
part of the problem with this recommendation and price range is is that the Avenger is doing a lot of things really well too, and the price is really similar between the two ships. So that's kind of something to consider. Now, if you want a two-person ship, then this obviously is going to beat out the Avenger in that category. So if you already have something like that, then maybe you want to hold off. You know, if you want a really cool alien tech ship and maybe missed out on the GN scout sales, then yes, go for it. This should be fun. It's very unique. It's a pretty cheap way to get into some of that technology and that vertical flight mode. Um, though I do think that anybody who already has a Cutlass or a Freelancer or something similar that can do a little bit of everything, I would probably not encourage you to pick this up. And the reason that I say that is it may seem really cool right now to have this, primarily because of the awesome look or the unique flight modes, but in all reality, you'll take the larger, bigger ship more often than not because that's generally going to mean, you know, more cargo, which means more money. It's going to bring more firepower, more shields, which means more staying power. Um, those types of things. I think the novelty of this ship is only going to take you so far. Now, there is another group of people who I think would like to pick this up, and that's those that want a cheap ship with LTI so they can cross chassis it into something else later. Keep in mind, that's not going to happen until it's flight ready, but um, people have done that in the past with other concept sales. And finally, before we wrap this up, um, CIG is already talking about the variants, which is kind of awesome. And the first variant is known as the quote-unquote researcher and is a science-focused model that has internal signal dampeners and a fancy set of scanners for discovery missions. I don't think that this ship seems to indicate that it's going to be a standard explorer. So maybe when they talk about researching, they're more talking about like micro life forms or uh, new wavelengths, that type of sciencey stuff. Um, the next variant is actually called the News Van, um, and it's, uh, it says that it's designed for deep space broadcasting by adding an a image enhancement suite um, that can kind of help you capture every single moment. Um, maybe then all of a sudden we're finally seeing a little bit more of a challenger for the Herald in that category. Um, and then finally, the Skirmisher is the combat variant, which I think we've all probably expected out of variants to see. Um, and it's labeled as, uh, you know, to be in front in the, the frontier of space. You know, it's going to trade off cargo space for a better power plant, better shields, and more weapons. So if any of those variants are enticing to you, you could always get the Reliant now and then pick up a ship upgrade later, assuming they end up being offered. So that's pretty much it. Um, I think it's a really cool looking ship um, with some interesting features and technology. And it kind of looks like a hybrid between like a Stingray and a B-Wing from Star Wars. Um, I think it's a good fit for a lot of people, but try and remember, you know, don't let the novelty sell you on something that is going to end up just collecting dust in your hangar. Anyways, that's my two cents. If you feel differently or have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.